Good evening, I am Jack Fuji and welcome to the sixth session of Agriculture 194C, Focus on Agriculture. Focus on Agriculture is a one credit course offered by your College of Agriculture, Forestry and Natural Resource Management here at the University of Hawaii at Hilo. And we come to you live every Thursday evening from the television studios located in the Mo'okini Library here on the University of Hawaii Hilo campus. For those of you joining us for the first time, Focus on Agriculture is a course to inform you about the various aspects of diversified agriculture in the state of Hawaii. But since the cooking class has been so popular, we've just continued with the cooking class where we bring in various guests to cook various dishes emphasizing local agricultural commodities. Before I go on, I'd like to make a few announcements, and if I could have the Elmo, please. Uh, if you have to get a hold of me, there are several ways you can get a hold of me. One is by snail mail at UH uh, Hilo, College of Agriculture, Forestry, and Natural Resource Management, or CAFNARM, 200 West Kawili Street, Hilo, Hawaii, 96720 or you can get a hold of me by phone uh, at 933-0850. And at the 933 number, if I'm not in, just leave a message on my CODA phone or the uh, college office phone, which is 974-7393. Or if you have to get a hold of me by fax, you can fax me at 974-7674. And for those of you on the email, you can email me at jfujii at hawaii.edu. Remember, for those of you who are taking the course for credit, uh, your recipes are due on March 31st, so that's a Wednesday, I believe, so make sure your recipes are in my office by March 31st. You can email those to me also. Since we are coming to you live at approximately 8 p.m., those of you in the viewing audience and, of course, those of you here in the classroom can call in and ask questions. So I hope you jot your questions down and at approximately 8 p.m., you can call in and ask questions. And, of course, those of you on the outer islands, you can call us collect. Tonight we have another very interesting presentation for you. We are featuring the Hilo Visayan Club, and uh, we're going to do some Filipino cooking this evening. And I'd like to introduce my guests. My guests are Margarita Hopkins, and we also have Ida Kogo, Ellen Kobile, and uh, Tommy Elisaga will be here a little later. So I'm going to turn the class over to uh, Margarita or Dai Dai, and so we can start our cooking. Okay, thank you, Dr. Fuji, and um, welcome to this um, cooking uh, class, Ag 100. Uh, tonight, we're going to be um, preparing six dishes, uh, Filipino dishes. And um, first, we're going to be doing fresh lumpia. I mean, maybe you guys have already eaten or have uh, seen what lumpia is. It's just like egg roll. But this one is fresh. Um, Ida uh, Kogo is going to demonstrate to you how to make uh, this recipe. And um, it's not necessarily a Visayan uh, dish, but um, it is very popular. It's normally served on special occasions uh, when we got uh, parties that celebrates either birthdays, uh, <coughs> weddings, and baptism. But this one is seldom seen in some of those um, festivities because uh, it is um, too much work to do, particularly that the wrapper has to be made uh, fresh. That's why it's called fresh lumpia. So I would like to let um, Ida tell you the whole thing and how to make it. Okay, we'll take it. Okay, now this dish is a cold dish. It's a summer dish. You don't serve it hot. Okay, so we'll start with our oil. I think it's three tablespoons of oil, about. So, Dai Dai, most of these dishes are, are uh, Visayan dishes in general, or? Um, 
It's actually uh, a dish that uh, everybody in the Philippines uh, uh, okay. cook. I and see. Uh, it has different uh, derivation of it, depends on the place of the Philippines where you're coming from. And of course, you have to utilize the local uh, ingredients that is available in that particular area. It might be uh, the same uh, dish, but then uh, sometimes the ingredients differ. Okay. Uh, from uh, place to place in the Philippines. So, okay. Ida, what are you doing? This over is there? a tablespoon of garlic, is in there? Okay. Yeah. About a handful of. A handful of onion. There is two onions in there, so this is about one. Okay. One <laughs> onions. Yeah. So, what are you making? This is the fresh lumpia. Okay, the filling, right? This is the filling. Okay. So lumpia is composed of the filling, the, the inside of the lumpia, and of course, you have the. Um, um, wrapper and uh, to uh, cut down the time of preparation she already prepared the wrapper and she will tell you what the wrapper was made of as soon as uh, well, she gets into it the so, hottest flame is where the, the teapot is oh the teapot yeah. so maybe you move that one. Oh, that, that one is nice yeah that's the hot flame yeah. so Ida now is uh, trying to saute um, the um, onion, the uh, round onion, and with uh, two or three tablespoons of oil, just to uh, give the onion uh, enough to it will get cooked, right? There you go. Okay. And then move it so you don't feel it quick anymore. Okay. There you go. Okay. It don't open. No, no, no. So Visayan is is a dialect or uh, like uh, like uh, like uh, Ilocano. Ilocano. Okay. Right. So, yeah. So we will not take too much time. We'll put the chicken. Yeah. It's about half a cup of chicken. Okay. It's cut into thin strips. Okay. And then about half a cup of shrimp. Is that fresh? Fresh yeah, shrimp. Fresh shrimp. Cut into small pieces. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. As uh, what you asked, uh, Dr. Fuji, Visayan is uh, the central part of the Visayan Islands, central part of the Philippines. We have seven huge uh, islands, just like here in Hawaii, and. Um, uh, okay, we let that cook, and then hikama. Okay. Yeah. So, if you have one big one, one big one is good. Two is also good if they're small. So this is also cut into strips. Yeah, into strips. Okay. Hikama. Yeah, hikama. J J. Uh, yeah, uh, J A. Uh, hikama. C A M I. You don't usually find this in the market, but yeah. swap meat always has some M A C A, and or sometimes they call it as a chapsu yam. Chapsu yam. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's, it's okay. sweet. You know, you can actually eat it raw. This one is also cut into julienne, but thin julienne. I think it's also called chapsu potato. Yes. I yes. I think so. Well, someone will call us up later this evening and, <laughs> and tell us for ask sure. us what is it. <laughs> yeah. Geez, Ida, you do that like a pro. Uh, are, uh, are you uh, mm -hmm. a chef or? Yeah, she is. Actually, oh, she okay. is a, a baker in your. Um, uh, which one is that I? Halikihau. Halikihau. So those oh. that eat at Halikihau, she makes I'm those beautiful bread. I make your breads. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, we just go in. Yeah, as soon as the meat is, is cooked, then put in the uh, chop. Hikama. Then about a cup of carrots go in. Okay, yeah. cup of carrots. And strips also, cut into strips. And about a cup of cabbage, maybe cup one and a half. <laughs> uh, what was that? Cabbage. Cabbage, cabbage. yeah. Okay. You cut it into, uh, you know. This, okay, uh, now that's cooking. 
So now we'll go to the wrapper. Okay. Yes. Can, so can you, you use the purchase wrapper or? No, no. We, can, okay. Yeah. This is something that is special that you guys have this, a chance okay. to eat. This is why you don't really see this all the time. Okay. Because <laughs> only I think a few of us know how to do it. So this is the first time they're going to make wrappers for lumpia here yes. on Focus on Uso, Agriculture. Uso yes, yeah. And there is an art in making those things, because if you don't make the, the, okay. the batter uh, right, then you won't end up with a, with a wrapper. You end up with a... Do we have the flour? Flour. <laughs> My <laughs> God, do we didn't have the flour? The, the, um, I forgot to bring flour. I got is, the eggs. Is that in here, yeah. by any chance? Oh, How about your cornstarch? No, no, you don't that? use cornstarch. Oh my goodness! Mm. Oh, so it's it's, oh. it's a flower. Oh, we forget the flower. Yeah. Well, well, why don't we just go through the motion? Well, yeah. okay. Okay. Now, the it wrapper. is three. One. It's one cup of flour. Okay. Two cups of water and three eggs. Okay. You make sure when you're mixing your flour, you mix it first with one cup of flour and one cup of water. Okay. Mix it up good and then wait until it's smooth, add your eggs, and then add your other cup of water, and then Mix it salt, in. and a little bit sugar to taste. And this will come out this way. I'm sorry, I forgot the flour. Ah. Yes. Okay. See, then you... Oil the pan you with You oil a brush? the pan with a brush, like okay. this, and then maybe two, ladle full and swirl it around. Make it even at the bottom and then when the sides come off, the, you know, when the... When, so it doesn't stick to the... Yeah, yeah. come off the sides, uh -huh. then you can pick it up and turn it over. Ah, yeah. I see. Yeah. Okay. So I guess we don't have to make that. <laughs> okay. So... So this is how it's done. Plate. Yeah. So, Dai, can you go over that recipe for the batter one more time? The batter uh, is uh, one cup um, flour, two cups water, and three eggs, and then a dash of uh, salt and, and uh, sugar to taste. Okay. Not much, I mean, just a dash of it. And so, what you do is um, you um, break your egg and then a cup of, uh, or since this is a cup, so half of the flour and then um, put the water and then you mix it until it's smooth and once it's smooth then you add the remaining uh, ingredients to to mix it together and then make sure that it's not lumpy okay okay magic television that is done <laughs> <laughs> so that's what it looks like so we wrap this up with your lettuce fold it at the bottom and roll it. That's how your flesh lumpia is going to look. Now we make the sauce. Can we put this? Put that thing on so I can put this thing. No, I need this here. And for those of you who just joined us, you're watching Agriculture 194C, Focus on Agriculture. And this evening we're featuring the Hilo Visayan Club with Margarita Hopkins, uh, Aida Kogo, Tommy Elisaga, and Ellen Kobo Kobile. And uh, the first dish that we're preparing for you is a fresh lumpia. And Ada is preparing that for us. And the unique thing about this lumpia is we're not using the store-bought wrappers. We're making homemade from scratch wrappers. Yes. But uh, we forgot the flour, so we're going <laughs> through the motion. Okay, now. That's about two and a half cups of water. Okay. For the okay. sauce now. Yeah. Okay, the garlic is about a tablespoon of garlic in there. Okay. All chopped up. All chopped up. And then we let it boil. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you like more garlic, you can always put more or yeah, less. Yeah. Right? We let it boil. And then we will go on with the escabeche.
Okay. Okay. Because While we are waiting for the sauce or the, the water you wanna to wrap? boil. I'll do the wrap. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you wrap so that we can give this guy stuff. So the next dish is called the uh, escabiche, escabiche, which is E-S-C-A-B-I-C-H-E. Escabiche. Escabiche. What? No, man, more. Then. Don't go on. Okay, escabiche is a fish dish. Baby. And um, mostly, uh, you can cook these okay. things out of your leftover fried fish. If you have leftover you fried fish, you, you can use that yeah. thing. No, 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 I want this. Or right. you could use the, the fresh ones, right. and then you just have to fry um, it, and then uh, no, no, and mix it with the rest of the sauce. But um, oftentimes in the Philippines, we all, we normally it's our nature to cook more than we can eat, and so uh, we always have leftovers and to. Um, make that leftovers uh, more uh, palatable mm. for people to eat again is we cook it into this type of dish. So Dai maybe you can get that uh, the first uh, fresh lumpia and put it on the table up okay. here and then maybe our overhead camera can <coughs> zoom okay. down. Okay, yeah. now oh, iskabiche. You're going to put some more. Yeah. Oh, Fried oh, ninoy. Nenui. Yeah. Ninoy. Okay. Oh well, any fish will do. But yeah. I got Ninui here. Everyone Mrs. knows what Nenui is. It's a good fish to catch. It uh, gives you Mrs. a lot of Nagakura fight. Mrs. Nagakura give me Ninui, so we'll get Ninui. Okay. <laughs> All you use is uh, bread, bread, and uh, squeeze the bread onto the hook and cast it out. Garlic. And oh, garlic. You can catch Nenui. Nenui. <clears throat> okay. This is already fried. It's okay. not left over, but it is already fried. fried special for focus on <laughs> agriculture tonight. Okay. Okay. I, I want. I want some little gamera. Yeah. Okay. I get about a okay, teaspoon and then, of garlic. Okay. I get about how much more you gonna make? Some size. Ginger. Cut into strips. Ginger. Okay. Okay. Finely chopped ginger. Right. What else? Oh. Okay. Okay, the the, uh, uh, the trick of this um, dish is that uh, the ginger, the, the presence of the ginger and uh, the mixture of the garlic. You know, oftentimes you have to cut the ginger into tiny strips so that you can eat it when you eat the fish. Oftentimes if you're going to cut it into big chunks, then you cannot eat those uh, big mm. chunks. So we normally have to cut it in, in little strips. Okay, and we have... One medium size red bell red. pepper, one medium size green, green. bell pepper. Okay. Yes. So Ida, do you rather bake or do these well, kind of dishes? I make my living as a baker. <laughs> I see. Okay, what do you want? So I need the Pineapple. Pineapple. Okay. okay, a can of pineapple. A can of pineapple, about 12 ounces. Okay. Yeah. So you mix it that's, with that. Goes in there. That's chunk pineapple. Yeah. It's chunk. Okay. And this is escabiche. Yeah. Yeah, escabiche. And then put your bell peppers. Is this kind of like a sweet sour dish? It is. Mm -hmm. It is. It is. Okay. Yeah. It's you, just a sauce that you put on top of the fish. Yes. So what, what, what does escabiche mean? Or did I put you on the spot there? <laughs> the problem is I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. actually, I mean. It's, it, it is supposed to be a Spanish dish, but mm -hmm. see, it it's is. from the grandparents. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it is. The Philippines is, uh, has a lot of influence from the Spaniards. We've been colonized by the Spaniards for so many decades. So. That's why most of our names and the dishes and uh, the last names that we have are all Spanish because of that for quite some time. Oh, so I it see. is, uh, it comes from uh, some, um, it's, it may be already, um, Lynn, you know, salt? murdered name. I know, they, it's, Lynn, hmm? it, it might have a Spanish name before I the see. true name and then as it moves along through the, the years, they try to uh, make, make their own to sounds like it's a Filipino um, I see. word. So it's just like pigeon of some sort of a Spanish things. 
But maybe Arnold can tell us if there is any any Spanish word escabeche or even close to it. I know it's salt. There. What was that on? This is sugar. Pickles. There. Oh, this. Yeah. It's okay. More pickled. Yeah. So it has uh, salt in it, the sugar, and uh, salt to taste. Okay. Pepper. Pepper to black taste. Pepper. Let's put about two heaping spoons of sugar. 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 Okay. Yeah. So if you have noticed, uh, most Filipino dishes is very attractive because we try to combine different colors. We normally have to have bright uh, color together with green. So when you, got, you, when you see that um, lumpia, you have the carrot and then the um, uh, cabbage in it. And then now this one, you have the red peppers, the green peppers, and the yellow thing, which is the... Um, a uh, yeah, chunk yeah. of um, oh. a pineapple, so we tend to, to do that. It's just because if it is attractive, you tend to eat it, right? And what are you going to add now? Okay, Ida? now... And that is corn corn starch. starch. Yeah. Oh, you're going to thicken it up a little it's bit? Thicken mm -hmm. it up. Okay. okay. Oh. All right. Not so much. And of course, this uh, Filipino dishes here are very uh, healthy because there's a lot of vegetable in yes. there and not too much uh, meat. meat. Right. And that's really what it is because back in the Philippines, meat is very, very expensive. If you live next to the coast, then you have fish. And then uh, meat is, uh, you know, pork is the number one meat in the Philippines. You can always get it every day at the butcher shop. But uh, fish, and otherwise, you use the meat uh, to actually more of uh, seasoning to your food. So we put only a little bit of that, and then put a little bit, uh, a lot more of the vegetables to to uh, uh, make your uh, meat last longer. Because it's very expensive. So a lot of the Filipino dishes has um, only a little bit of it is. Um, um, uh, meat and uh, quite a bit of it is vegetables. Now this escabeche, you can actually use also chunks of uh, meat like um, a tuna or marlin and if you don't want and for those that are um, very particular with their diet instead of frying it you can actually broil it or if not steam it and then uh, use it and uh, normally the fried one is the best because you can uh, the uh, mixture of the sauce and then uh, some oil in the fish more would have a good one. So any type, leftover fish, what you have, you can use. And then the only thing that you have to prepare is the sauce. And then you have a new dish instead of just plain day old fried fish. So th this is like a, a vegetable sauce, right? It's mm -hmm. got all these vegetables in there. Yes, yeah. And, and you, you can use any kind of fish you want? Any, any kind, kind of fish. Any kind okay. of fish. It could be filet or it could be with bones in it and um, big, small. It doesn't matter. What she's adding there? That's cornstarch corn starch. mixed with okay, water. water. That's yeah. a thickening agent. To thicken agent. it, to thicken it, right. See, without, w without putting that in, it's going to be real watery. Mm -hmm. So when you put the uh, cornstarch water mixture in there, it thickens it up and makes it real, like a, like a real thick sauce. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's how it goes. And then you just pour it over the fish, and, um, and then the sauce would, we get, the fish absorbs all of the sauce. You normally leave it before you uh, serve it, just to make sure that the sauce gets into the fish. All right, maybe Dida, you can just uh, put that put on our in. table up in the front and... Uh, this is good. Or leave it there for a second. To prepare it like... Okay, now you can In the morning, it. eat it at lunch. Yes. Because the sauce would soak up in your fish. Mm -hmm. But you can eat it right away if you want to. 
Mm -hmm. So it's better to leave that sit a little while. A little mm -hmm. while, so, yeah. so the sauce would absorb into the I fish. I see. Yeah. Or, or if you want to, if you really are hungry, you want to eat it right now, what you can do is put the fish in the, uh, in the sauce before you take it out. I mean, let it, let it uh, simmer in the sauce, and ah. then you can put it in there. I see. Yeah. So either that, those are the variations that you have. Okay. okay. And then the next one that she's going to prepare to you is tropical chicken salad, her no. specialty. Put there. We'll make okay. salad. Tropical chicken salad. Mm -hmm. We've had a, our fresh lumpia, mm -hmm. escabiche, and now the tropical chicken it? salad. Okay, now, this is hikama. You know hikama now. Okay. This is about one big hikama. Okay. That goes in there. Finely chopped. It it's julienne. Like julienne, yeah, okay. Mango. Okay. Choose the mango that is not overripe. Firm to the touch. Okay. Because it's a solid. And then the tartness will give it yeah, a better taste. Now, uh, if you're allergic to mangoes, then uh, it's better to use a ripe one, huh? This is, this is almost ripe, I mean, but it is better if it's not soft because it will not disintegrate in your salad. I salads. see. So, so you want to use kind of a not quite overripe, but... No, not, not quite ripe yet, I but see. sweet already. I see. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm allergic to mangoes. So oh, I gotta oh, not eat that. <laughs> but the best actually of that thing is uh, when you just pick it from the tree. That one that is almost ripe and it's still crispy. Because this one I has set in the store for quite some time, so it's not really as crispy as it should. This is crispy. This that is Honolulu mango. <laughs> Honolulu mango. It is fresh. Okay, we're cutting it into strips just like that. Okay. So if you're allergic to poison oak, there's a possibility that you might be allergic to mango sap. Yeah. We don't have poison oak in Hawaii. Yeah? No poison oak in Hawaii. <laughs> but those are, I'm, I'm just warning the people from the mainland. Oh, oh, okay. All right. Yeah, this one is hikama again, that she cuts into, into uh, uh, strips. And now she's uh, cutting the mango, the almost ripe mango, mixing it with that. So jicama is, is uh, common in the Philippines? Yes, Yes. very. Yeah. We eat this fresh like this, or we cook it as vegetable. Right. I see. Yeah. In some parts, particularly in the northern part of the Philippines, they eat that thing as a, as a fruit, you know, because it's sweet and, and it's crunchy. crunchy. Yeah, it's just like eating apple. It's an equivalent of apple. Uh, here you eat apple, there we eat that one. Kind of like those Asian pears. Pears, right, yeah. And then uh, back in the central Philippines where um, we have it, but not as common as in the northern part of the Philippines. So uh, we only have that during uh, some, some parts of the year when it's in season. And uh, we uh, don't eat it as a, as a fruit. We cook it uh, as a, you know, in a dish. And mostly, most in this particular type of the fresh lumpia and then in salads. What was the question again? Okay. Uh, uh, the Shredded part? chicken. Okay. Yeah. So you have those? The sh About a cup, not okay. all these. That's, uh, what is that, chicken thighs or chicken this breast? Is, this is breast. Oh. Okay. You can it's use breast, you can use thighs. Okay. Yeah, it's just strips of uh, chicken meat. And so you just kind of strip it up, kind of yeah. like cut Boil it, up. it and then, uh, and then and Okay. Then okay, it. now the dressing. Okay. Something to so, uh, Dai Dai, would you say that this uh, chicken, tropical chicken salad is Visayan, or would you say it's uh, kind of general throughout the Philippines? It's it's not really even the Philippines. Okay. But I'm Filipino now. It's Filipino. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Good answer. No, it's Ida. it's one of those dish that is a, a variation of some place else um, because it is. Yes. It's actually 
uh, you can only make these things back in the Philippines on the time when the mango season is on. I so see. those are on the summer times when most of the mangoes yes. are in season because we don't have mangoes all the time there. So, um, you know, this is... Uh, <laughs> This is well, <laughs> <laughs> so this is, uh, this is uh, about a cup of mayo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and um, That's you what cannot, you get when you come unprepared. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot uh, give these things all the time. I mean, you only give these things on uh, a very special occasion. One fourth cup of lily koi concentrate. Mm -hmm. If you can get lily koi base, that would be good. But you have to sweeten it with honey. But I couldn't find no lily koi base. I guess they only got it in the kitchen there. Okay. <laughs> so. So there. Uh, that's about a quarter cup, did you say? About a quarter cup, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Of lily koi concentrate. Uh, concentrate. Lily, lily yeah. koi concentrate. Oh. Well, I think that'll put some good flavor into mm -hmm. that uh, mayo. Yeah. And then. A dash of salt. A dash of salt. Pepper, that's a pepper. Okay. Pour and it over pour your it. salad Ooh. and toss it. And bam. Bam. So most Tro of the dishes that we are preparing today is um, very simple and easy to make because everybody is busy. So uh, if you have time before you go to sleep, if you can just cut those things up already, so when you're ready to put it together, it's quick. And um, oh, we're that's what we are uh, trying to do here. A bit more so, uh, we didn't, yeah. So Ida, how did you cook the chicken? I boiled it. Just boiled the yeah. chicken. Yeah, you I can see. boil it. You can cook it in the oven. Okay. As long as the chicken is cooked, but don't overcook it when you cook it in the oven. See, let it stay moist. Because you don't want your chicken it. in here to be crispy. I see. Yeah. So it's better to boil it, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Okay. And then you can save the broth also for yeah. uh -huh. another dish. Right. So now we chop some parsley. Okay. That's a regular. Yeah, that's this a parsley regular from parsley. my garden. Okay. <laughs> I only have one plant. <laughs> it's in a pot, but it helps. So you do all the baking here on campus for the students that live in the dorms, uh, in the well, resident halls, huh? all your sandwiches, your hoggies at campus center, I made them. Oh, okay. And do you also bake uh, pastries and things like that? Yeah, the desserts for the kids. So who makes all the scones? That, they order that I think. Oh, okay. I didn't make the scones. And sprinkle it with the chopped parsley. up parsley. Garnish. And you're done. And, then and done. there's tropical chicken salad. salad. Yes. Now your sauce for the lumpia. Okay, you got to explain, Ida. Okay. Yeah. I had about two and a half cups of water. Okay. And then sugar. Yeah. You had some garlic in there also? Yeah. I have garlic, yeah. And that is garlic. This one is because I don't have the chicken broth. Okay. It is. T it would taste better with chicken broth. Yeah. Okay. But we don't have it. We're using water. But you'll get the idea. Okay. So I guess if you are gonna be cooking, or making that um, tropical chicken salad, then you can make the lumpia too because you need the broth for the chicken, right? That's right. <laughs> okay. <coughs> it's sugar to taste. This one is up to you. You want it sweet, put more sugar. How much is that? A fourth? About Maybe half? Half, a half a cup. Half a cup of sugar. Cup sugar. Right. Two cups of water. Yeah. Or two, better yet, two cups of chicken broth. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Ida says it tastes good. It's sweet. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. A little bit of salt. Dash of salt. salt. Okay. And that's your cornstarch, right? So cornstarch. I hope I have enough. And then you just mix it up. And it gets nice and thick. Mm -hmm. I don't okay. have enough. Where's that? What else? Too big. Need more cornstarch. I need more cornstarch. Okay. <clears throat> So is, is this kind of like a dip for the uh, lumpia or you pour yeah, it over yeah. the lumpia? you pour it over. You oh, I over. see. Okay. Yeah, those really lumpias, uh, they look Looks good. good. Mm. And it tastes good too. So you guys can So actually they're open-ended so a little bit of the lettuce sticks out at one mm -hmm. end. Mm -hmm. They do that uh, to uh, distinguish it from the regular lumpia that um, you either fry Almost looks like oh, a California roll, rolls, right? <laughs> Except uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, instead of using nori, you're using uh, lumpia. Lumpia, right. Okay. Okay, now you do that. Just hold it nice and steady or leave it on the table and then the overhead camera can zoom. It's there we go. Yeah. Ah, looks nice. Mm -hmm. You guys wow. hungry yet? <laughs> okay. There we go. There we go. Boy, I can see all and the that's students pretty much. drooling now. They just, <laughs> they just can't wait to dig into this food. Yeah, and that's pretty much all the dishes that um, Ida uh, prepared for you and for uh, everybody. Okay. And um, you can have all of your questions later when we finish our um, uh, presentation. So we've so got the next, three more dishes, right? We have three more dishes to make. And the next one is, you want to do it? Uh, Me. Oh, okay. Ellen is going to demonstrate to you uh, the uh, eggplant omelette. Okay. okay. Eggplant is uh, widely used in the Philippines. I mean, um, I remember that it's uh, called uh, the food for the brain. There is something in that eggplant that really makes you smart. So those that hate eggplant, you better start eating now, particularly if you have exams, right? You heard that, folks. <laughs> Finals will be coming up pretty soon, so stock up on your eggplants. Eggplants, and right. And I believe in it. I mean, Guaranteed so. A in focus in agriculture. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you have seen eggplant before being used in some other dishes that you are uh, used to here. You know, the pinak bed, there's always eggplant. But this thing oui, is a whole uh, mm. eggplant. Um, different uh, variations on uh, cooking eggplant just to make sure that you don't get uh, uh, tired of eating it. So we have different types of dishes uh, on how to cook eggplant. This okay. time, um, Ellen is going to show you uh, the omelette. And what it is, is um, you need, as a start, if there's only two of you at, at home, uh, you can have four medium uh, eggplant. Let's okay. show them the eggplant, that. And then uh, you actually have to grill this eggplant. Okay, so yeah. as a caution, you have to make sure that you poke a hole in this eggplant with, with a fork or a knife so it is not going to explode in your face when you put it in, in the fire. You can either grill it over the fire like that and you just put it in there or you can grill it in a grill or over on an open fire or the hibachi type of stuff. Okay. And then once it is cooked, you make sure that you cook it very well, then you peel it. And that's what it looks like when it is uh, cooked. You peel it, take out the outer um, uh, covering of the eggplant. Okay. And it, this is how it And that's how it would look like after you peel it. Oh. Now, in a, in a, a bowl, you... Um, Crack two large eggs. Two, three, I get three. Uh, three, you want oh, large like eggs. Okay. And um, and then you beat it, right? Mm -hmm. No. Sorry. So this is, is this a typical dish uh, from the Visayan area? Yeah, we we see it. I mean, also, I mean, it's actually everywhere. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you you beat it, and then you put some um, uh, garlic salt. Or okay. regular salt. Regular salt. Okay. Enough to, because uh, this eggplant is very bland, so you put your seasoning into the egg. 
I see. Okay, and a dash of um, black pepper to go with that. Yeah. Okay, dash of black pepper. Black pepper. And then what you do is you uh, flatten the eggplant, you know, and dip it in that uh, egg butter. Okay. Flatten it up because so that it would, uh, the, the uh, egg is going to absorb into the uh, uh, meat of the eggplant. Ah. And then meantime, you heat up your pan. You put uh, three tablespoons of oil, any type of oil you want. And then uh, make it very, very hot. Because if you're going to put that eggplant, when the oil is not hot, the oil gets absorbed into the eggplant. So make it very, very hot, and kind then uh, fry it for kind three like minutes. Kind like eggplant French toast, then. Yeah, it looks like an eggplant French toast. Instead of using bread, <laughs> you're using the eggplant. Eggplant, yes. All right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's it. Well done. So uh, you heat up uh, two, uh, three tablespoons of oil, and... Um, Wait till it is, it is very very hot, so it will not abs uh, you know absorb all of the oil in there. I see. And then uh, you fry it three minutes in one side, and then after that you turn it around for another three minutes, and your dish is done. Would you would you call this a, <clears throat> a breakfast dish or lunch or dinner or snack um, or what? Uh, this one is actually um, eating uh, eating for lunch or dinner. I see. Normally. Okay. And then uh, what you do is you eat it with um, uh, either ketchup if you want to, to flavor it on or a mixture of um, uh, you chop uh, tomatoes into um, little uh, cubes and then mix it with um, green onions and cilantro and then a sprinkle a little bit of salt and then mix it up and then uh, serve it with that. Kind of like a salsa. As you you kind of like a salsa. salsa and you eat it ah. with, and then you eat it with with hot rice. Oh, maybe we get the uh, overhead camera So, so it's actually a vegetable dish and this is for people that does not want to eat meat. I mean, uh, if you don't want to eat egg, then um, I guess you have to compromise because uh, the only you, way you to make it taste good is to uh, put some eggs in it. You, you can use the white, only yeah. white if you are... Or yeah, healthy. if you are so uh, concerned about cholesterol, you can use the egg white. They don't use the, the yolk. Okay. And so you just uh, put it uh, in the pan for, th as I said, three minutes and then um, flip it over and then you, you're done. So I said we are preparing these dishes quick because everybody is very busy and then you actually come up with a very nutritious uh, food. So how long will it take to uh, cook the eggplant if you put it over the hibachi? The hibachi? Uh, it shouldn't take long, but you have long. to watch because mm -hmm. it will burn, right? I see. Yeah. So you want to make sure the eggplant is nice and soft. It's and nice then, and soft, right. Mm -hmm. Then yeah. let it cool off and mm -hmm. peel it. And then it. you peel it. Okay. And then um, it would be really a really terrible time for you if you don't cook it very well because when you peel it, then the uh, part of the uh, meat of the eggplant also gets stripped uh, when oh. you peel the... Uh, so if this one was not very, very uh, cooked, so when you peel this one, then part of the meat is going to be taken out. I see. So you have to make sure that the only thing that you take out is the, is the peel. Oh. Yeah. So okay. that's the trick. Okay. Is there, is there a, a Filipino name for this particular dish, or? You... Um, there was, but then uh, we we actually call it um, uh, eggplant is talong in in our um, uh, dialect okay. and relleno, and that is a Spanish uh, word for stuffed thing. Oh. And uh, but although it's not stuffed, we still call it relleno because it has been uh, cooked with something else in it. I see. Okay. Oh, that looks like it's, it'll be tasty. Yes, yeah. Okay. And is this cooked on special occasions or is this kind of a typical? It's every day, every, every day, day kind um, of dish. Every day dish, yeah. Okay. And uh, particularly um, in, in times that uh, you don't have uh, plentiful of leafy vegetables and you want to have vegetables, we always eat with vegetables, then 
uh, we use eggplant. So Dai Dai, what does the Hilo Basayan Club do? Do you have various activities or? Yes, we do. Our um, uh, club meets every second uh, Sunday of the month at the Hale Aloha Conference Room right there uh, next to the uh, HCC's cafeteria. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did um, offer a Visayan class, uh, an introduction to a Visayan class where we teach you how to speak our dialect. And then we have a cultural committee where um, we uh, teach our membership and those that are interested to learn our uh, folk dances, native dances. So, and oftentimes uh, the group is invited by different uh, Filipino groups or even community groups to perform in some of special uh, activities in the community. So, can non Visayans join the club? Someone they like can. me? They can. Uh, we are not discriminating anybody. Okay. But once you, you get in there, you really have to learn some of our ways, you know, so at least some of our dialect and the food, because we always have. Um, potluck dinner. Potluck. So if you want to eat good food, you come every second Sunday at Hale Aloha. So, but don't bring Kentucky, I mean, chicken. Don't bring you chicken. You got to have uh, <laughs> the Cyan food. Yes, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Okay. So All that right. one is done. That was quick. And yeah. um, tell me, you want to do yours? I will do mine last. Okay. Yeah. Not, not dessert oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> she, he said that uh, because his is dessert, so we are gonna cook his last. Okay. Okay. What I'm gonna cook today is uh, pancit. Everybody knows pancit because um, it you see it in every uh, party that the Filipinos has. Okay. That's pan pancit. Pancit. P a n s i t. Right. And pancit bihon. Bihon. B B I H O N. Yeah, bihon. What actually means is rice noodle. Okay, rice noodle dish. Yeah. And for those of you who just joined us, you're watching Agriculture 194C, Focus on Agriculture. And this evening we're featuring the Hilo Visayan Club. And my guests this evening are Margarita Hopkins, Ida Kogo. Uh, Tommy Elisaga and Ellen Kobile. Mm -hmm, very good. Okay, I brought my own wok. It's beat up, but then hey, it cooks good panse. Okay. Okay, so these are my ingredients. I have here um, dried shrimp. Okay. The dried good. shrimp has to be soaked in water. Okay. And uh, I have uh, Chinese peas, the sweet peas okay. that you guys see in, in, in the store. All right. I, uh, I actually count how many it is. It's 20, 20 small Chinese peas. 20 small Chinese peas. Yeah, right. Not more than 20 now, I know less. <laughs> okay. You can have more, but uh, I have to count it because it's so expensive. If you see it, it costs like almost $5 a pound, so. Okay. So you got that. And then uh, you have um, a fourth of a head of a, uh, of a cabbage. Cabbage. Okay. Okay. We're going to be cutting these things uh, later. All right. And then uh, I have strips of carrots again. Okay. See? About how many carrots would you say? This one is two medium carrots. Two medium yeah. carrots. Julianne. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to show you how that thing uh, was done. And then uh, I have here um, the round onions. Okay. What we did is uh, cut it into strips. You know, when you cut it, instead of going this way, you cut it this way. Okay? Okay. And there's a trick, the reason why I, I did that. And then one piece of your dry Chinese sausage. You know, the lok chong? Okay? One. Okay. And um, most often, when people mix pancit, they only use one type of meat, but I normally combine two types of meat, chicken and pork. Okay. Okay. So what I have here is uh, one pork chop. You know, you go to the store and get the pork chop and try to get the one that has a little bit of, of fat in it, not the very lean. Okay. I'm sorry for those that really wants lean, but you can do it, but the fat is important to get the the taste. That's the good where all taste the flavor the is. That's right? where the You're flavor right in is. That fat. Yeah. Yes. 
So I cut these things into uh, little strips. If you look at it, see how little it is? And okay. I'll tell you the reason why I did that. And then the chicken, of course, is half of the breast of a chicken. You oh. buy those frozen ones, and they normally are in half things. So just get half. Okay. Now also, now remember, with this, because we want to stretch our meat, we always don't use too much meat. And um, we try to um, use it only to, to uh, make your dish you know, taste good. As, as, uh, okay. I don't see seasoning because it has really in there. So that's what it is. And then um, you have the um, bihon. This is the um, rice noodle. The rice, uh, the rice uh, noodle. You can you can get these things in uh, the um, Oriental food store. It's a rice noodle, any type of rice noodle. I just got this okay. one because I like I like the way the pancit comes out. So one pack of it. Okay. So the Vietnamese they use the thicker the rice thicker noodle, rice but noodles, this is the right. real thin, thin rice very noodles. thin, okay. right? Yeah. So you can find that in the Asian section the Asian, of the right. supermarket. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And so when you cut this uh, a carrot, see it's 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 in strips. The reason why I put it in strips because my noodles are thin, and you don't want to put vegetables in there that are really big uh, when the overall uh, main ingredients that you have is thin. So what I normally do is just uh, cut these things into little strips, not short, and then just cut it like this, you know. So it kind of blends in with blends the noodles. Blends in with the noodles. The purpose of which is for you to eat the whole thing. Because this dish is a complete meal. It has the vegetables, it has the meat, and it has the starch. So that's why it's very, very popular. Because once you eat it, you got it all. You don't have to eat anything anymore. And um, you got that. And um, this lop chong, I, I said that you have to cut it diagonal because it doesn't look good when you, you cut it. Because some of the, although this one is to, to uh, enhance the taste of your pancit, but the thing too is uh, it uh, gives you a sort of a, a decorative uh, effect to it. So you cut it like this, you know, like diagonal, a little thin, and, and only one because you don't want to overwhelm your uh, pancit with the taste of the uh, lop chong because it has its distinct taste. So you just want to have enough to mix it and blend it in. Okay. So you got that. And so you got the whole thing. So first of all, the trick in making a nice pancit is to put enough oil. Because if you don't put enough oil, you have a pancit that is too uh, bland or blah looking. Okay. So uh, what normally I do is I put uh, a fourth cup of oil to start with. And you said, whoa, that's a lot. But actually, it's just like um, eight tablespoon. One, one fourth cup is eight tablespoon um, uh, full. So okay. this is oil. I uh, normally use olive oil for those that are uh, very um, health conscious. Health conscious. Okay. So um, what I normally gauge is I look at my bottom of my wok and then just fill these things up in there. So that's pretty much one fourth of a cup. Okay. okay. So let it. Uh, this one depends on what um, temperature you put in. Gets hot very very fast. So what you do is you heat it up and then uh, put your garlic. We tend to uh, cook with a lot of garlic because garlic normally um, gives the taste of your. So this one is um, a th a three cloves of garlic. And I mince it up. And the reason why, because I want you guys to eat the garlic. And if I'm going to make it chunks, the people will not eat it. And there's some medicinal properties of the garlic. So you brown it. And then you put in your... Um, onions. Okay. Put it in there, and then stir it up, just to make sure that uh, they are cooked very, very quickly. And then you put in the pork first because the uh, pork has to be cooked very well. So uh, I put the 
portion of the pork that has a, a more of a the fat. of a fat okay. first, <clears throat> and then I cook that. So that's actually one one good. This pork is chop, one huh? one pork chop. Wow. You know the pork chop that you guys see in the in the store. That's what I call stretching the pork chop, yeah. Yes. And, and yeah. also the chicken and the lap chong. Yeah, and so normally, you know, people will wait for um, uh, the time when your dish is almost done, and then you put the uh, the salt. I normally put the salt as you cook the meat so that it will have some taste to it. You know, okay. I am calling for like a, a tablespoon of salt, so half of it you, you put in, or a pinch of it you put it in. Okay. Then you just cook that stuff, and then uh, put the whole thing, the, the rest of the meat, okay? And those are strips too, a small, small little ones. Okay. Just to make sure that they are, they are so small, and when they are cooked. It'll cook much faster if you have it in small strips like right, that. Right, yeah. <coughs> so you cook that one, and... Um, Actually, this is going to cook kind of fat rapidly because everything is cut in small strips. It strips. That's exactly that's the that's the uh, okay. um, the secret of it. So you don't have to. The only thing, and then you cover it up to make it sure that um, it cooks fast. Okay. In the meantime, while you are putting that stuff, then you can cut your vegetables. I mean, I have pretty much cut the the rest of it, but um, you have this one that you need to. And then when you cut this uh, cabbage, don't cut it into little, little itsy bitsy thing because once it gets cooked, it gets soggy. So you cut it a uh, little bit uh, chunkier like this. Okay. And then um, get that. And this one normally goes towards the end because you don't want to get this thing soggy. We found out that um, it was actually Ellen that was telling me that um, normally if you put a cabbage in your uh, pancet, it tends to make your pancet uh, go bad quicker. I don't know, maybe some enzymes in this one. So um, that's why you just cook it enough that it's still crunchy and uh, yet it's not overcooked. Okay. So you got that. So it's almost done. So until the, the pork is no longer pink, yeah? So this one is almost done. So when this thing is almost done, you put in your chicken. Okay. Uh, so that this one will not be also too, too uh, done. Okay. Otherwise it gets tough. So you mix your chicken, and then you put a little bit of uh, salt again because you put some more meat in it. Okay. And then mix it up, and then you cover it up again to uh, get that stuff to cook. And uh, the reason why you have to cook these things is to induce the meat to extract its juice. Because okay. we need those juice when you cook the noodles. I mean, you could actually, um, uh, there are two different ways of cooking pancit. One is you can soak this thing in water until it's soft. And then when you put it there, then you don't really have to put as much water in your meat mixture because this one is already soft. You don't want to overcook it. And the other way is to cook it like this without even soaking it, just direct from the, the package to that. And to do that, you have to put more water in your mixture, okay? So... I uh, cover these things to extract the juice, and then you can add your water in it, and then it's just like having a broth already in there. I see. So what I did is we actually call for five um, cups of water to cook this 500 grams of noodles. The way, see how hard this thing is? And uh, what I do is I, I uh, use only three cups of water uh, to uh, get these things in here, and then when I'm... Uh, trying to mix this one with uh, the meat mixture, I use uh, chicken broth to add as we move along and uh, cooking it. Okay. So uh, this thing is almost done. And so this is the time now that I will uh, put my, my water. So it might be a good idea that you have um, actually heat up your water already. So 
you don't have to wait for it to... Um, so do you want that water to be boiling, Dai Dai? Yeah, boiling or, or warm or hot. Okay. It's because uh, the other thing too, you don't want the water, uh, you don't want to put water in here which is cold because you are going to change the temperature of the meat. I see. So you have to uh, put the, the hot water. Okay. Not only that uh, you don't change the temperature of the meat, but then the cooking is not disrupted. Okay, so that's three. This is a cup, right? Can you use uh, chicken broth or something? Or yeah, you can. Actually, at this point, you can. But I'm not using it because the juice of the meat is already there. I see. Yeah. So it has already the taste in it. Okay. So uh, now that you have this one, you let it boil. And this is the time now that you are going to put your soy sauce. You see? The soy sauce is important, too, to make your pancit looks nice and brownish, not pale, right? Okay. So um, I asked for a, a fourth cup of it, so you just put it there. Make sure I it has a nice tan, huh? Yeah, put it a nice tan okay. because uh, you want a brownish type of stuff. You don't want a pancit that is, that okay. is um, pale. Yeah. About how much is that? A half a cup? No, a fourth of a cup. Fourth of a cup. Yeah. Okay. And then the soy sauce, you can use any type of soy sauce that you have, that you can get your hands on. I mean, Kekoman. This one is, in particular, is I'm so partial. This is um, soy sauce that I really okay. like, a different type of stuff. But um, so you just uh, put that stuff in and let it uh, boil, right? Ah, and nice by then, you could, you could actually taste that this thing is has the taste already. Uh -huh. And now that it is boiling, what we do is put this thing. Okay, now you have seen that there's more, there's more fluid, uh, you know, like um, uh, juice in it, in this one. Okay. So I put these things in, and the reason for that, because we want to have enough juice to cook this very, very uh, hard noodle. So you put that stuff in there, all of it. Is that kind of like, it's almost like long rice. Yeah, it's almost long rice, but this is actually, it's not uh, made of uh, mung beans. It's made of um, uh, rice, oh, rice flour. Okay. Yeah, so you <coughs> put that stuff in, and actually once you get that stuff there, um, you could, you start tossing it. And sometimes, uh, oftentimes, they try to cut it, you know, like break it into pieces, but I don't uh, break it into pieces because I don't want it to have... A pancit that are this. I still you want, want the long of thing. Pancit, right. Huh? I want. I want the piece oh, to, when it to soaks stay up the intact. Juice, it really softens up, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it softens up. So uh, you just put these things in, in there, oh. and uh, toss it. And then uh, once it softens up, then you start to tossing. And this one will absorb all of those um, uh, the juices, uh, liquid in here. So if if the noodle is not cooked yet and um, the, the juice in this uh, pan is already gone because the other one got um, sucked in, that's when you try to add more of the broth. I see. Because uh, if you're going to put water, it doesn't have taste. You I are see. going to destroy the taste of that stuff, right? I see. So you just uh, toss it. Continue tossing, and then you will say, well, what happened to your shrimp and your thing? So this is the time now that you could actually put your shrimp and your lap chong. You don't want to cook it together with the meat, because otherwise it will have those, those things. And then while you are doing that, you just keep on uh, tossing it. I'm getting hungry, Dai Dai. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, until this one is... Um, is soaked in, in the in the in the fluid of, of this one. And then the uh, and then the cabbage goes in last. And then the cabbage goes in last. And then uh, now that um add, and then the, the, the vegetables should go later because you don't want to uh, make it um it's real soft uh, you want it kind right. of crunchy. Yeah. yeah. I so see. you just have to uh, keep on tossing it and then let it so now there's not much in a more fluid. So that's when I put this one. The chicken broth. The chicken broth. And you just have to uh, uh, keep on uh, putting that stuff until this whole noodles is going to get. Okay. Uh, 
Wow. Almost looked like a spaghetti, yeah? Yeah. And then uh, it's, it gets again, and then you, you add. I mean, you, ca you can see it, that it's, it just uh, sucks it up because it is so, so. Um, so uh, how long does uh, benig benignet, benignet, how long does that take? Yeah, very quickly because he already, he already cooked oh, okay, it. Okay, okay. And he will just show you how that thing is. Um, it's cooked. Okay, now it's really getting soft, the noodles, yeah? Mm-hmm. See, and then uh, this way, if you didn't um, get this, uh, the, uh, the noodles is still intact. You know, it's not... Uh, so with that particular dish, uh, the pancit bihong, you don't need to serve it with rice because it's got the no, starch No, it has already, already. That, yeah, normally, we, we eat it as a, as a dish, we eat it um, as a snack, uh -huh. because uh, it, uh, Filipinos likes eating snacks, and when yeah, they eat that's... snacks, just like eating a, a real meal. And uh, oftentimes, they use these things for, for snack purposes. So, so you it's just got a little bit of flavor of pork chop, chicken, and lop chong. And, and lop chong, and then the, the um, the dried shrimp. Ah. Yeah. And then, um, of course, you have to taste the noodles once in a while. So make sure that the, it is done, right? So if I join the Bisayan Club, more often than not, I'll be able to eat some of this yep, uh, pancit. Yes, we always have pancit every every uh, every time we have somebody is making pancit. So you just keep on uh, tossing it like this. Yeah. Wow, oh, that looks good. And then that's when you you put in your uh, carrots first because carrot has has more body to it, right? Okay. And then you just just keep on mixing it. Yeah. Now that adds some color to the dish. Yeah. See the the color again that you have, and so the pancit looks doesn't look pale and doesn't even look very very dark either. It's just uh, right. And then you put your peas. Oh. The reason why I soak the peas because it's very, uh, it's already limp in the, in the store and you want it to be crunchy and... Um, Boy, now, now it's yes. going to be like a real Christmassy in there yeah. huh, with the green. Yeah, with, with, with the stuffs. And then after that, you just mix it. While you are doing that, actually the vegetables is cooking. Uh huh. And then you put this one. Cabbage in last. The cabbage is the last because we don't want actually the cabbage to. I mean, it's just per, and it has to be crunchy, right? Perfect to be crunchy. There you go. And then you can actually feed. How many? Depends on how hungry you are, guys. So, Dai Dai, how often do you cook pancit, pancit? at home? <laughs> I actually, maybe at least, you know. Once a month? Two or three times a month. <laughs> oh, okay. So, um, this is what it is. Boy, that looks good. Yeah, and then uh, what you do is you put it, or you can either leave it here. You just have to, and see, if you look at it, you don't really have that much meat. There is meat in there. But then most of it is just noodles, right? And, mm -hmm. um, and oftentimes people just want to eat panse to eat the noodles and then leave the meat. And that's the reason why I cut the meat into little strips. So when you eat the noodles, the meat gets, gets in with it. You so you cannot at the select. Same time. Mm. Yes. And then what you do, that's the reason why I have this. Those that a lot of people doesn't like cilantro, but it actually give a very good taste to your panse. So what you do is you just cut up this cilantro and um, green mm -hmm. onions. And then, uh, you know, very, very fine. And then um, put it all over it. And I have two eggs there, Len. Maybe you can. That, that could 
be like kind of a garnish a to garnish them. thing yeah okay but actually this one would um you know if you eat it it would add a lot of flavor a nice a nice flavor to it so what you do is you got that then you just you just sprinkle Sprink it all over right mm. so you have you have a nice thing and then you can you can garnish it um with um, um, hard-boiled egg. Oh, wow. And then actually you can put the hard-boiled egg in there to, to make it look nice. Mmm, that looks good. And now everybody's hungry, right? And then you put it there. And um, oftentimes they eat it with um, calamansi, you know, those little lemon. Uh-huh. And then what they do is you just squeeze it over it, oh. and voila, you guys are... Pancet bihon. Pancet bihon. There we go. Don't go away. So you guys have... So it's quick. Uh, the reason why it's quick, because you already had cut up all of the ingredients. Otherwise, it okay. will take a while. Here we go. All right. And then now our dessert. Our dessert. Benignit. Benignit. Okay, that's B-I-N-I-G-N-I-T. Benignit. Benignit. And this is a dessert dish. Yes. Okay, and we got uh, Tommy Elisaga preparing the uh, benignit. And uh, how long is it going to take us to make this, Tommy? <laughs> uh, 10 minutes. Okay. We've got another 20 minutes to go, roughly. Okay, before, right, 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 right. Yeah, we have to. So tell us what you're going to do, uh, Tommy. Uh, first of all, I'm going to show you folks the ingredients okay. in the benignit. We're going to use um, of a de-sized taro. Okay. Yeah. And it was these and two sizes. Uh, sweet potato. They were uh, purple inside. Purple sweet potato. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. First, uh, first I'm gonna. Um, first of all, I boil. I boil these uh, taro and potato. Okay. It comes uh, cook. I, I I test it with a fork. Okay. Poke it into the potato and the taro. So you boil it until you can poke a fork in it. Yeah. Without any problem. Okay. Yeah. I, I just uh, boil it with the skin on. Okay. Then after it's cooked, then I scrape it off with a with a spoon. Okay. Take the skin off. All right. And then, and then I diced it. This is a diced um, taro. Taro. Is that the poi taro or is that the Chinese taro or does it make a taro. difference? Poi taro. Poi taro. Okay. Right. So you want to use poi taro. Okay. Then I diced the uh, the potato. Okay, the nice purple uh, potatoes. Okay. And this is the uh, the main ingredient. This is the uh, mochi um, mochi sweet rice. rice. Okay, sweet yeah. rice. I boil it uh, one and a half cups uh, rice um, with five cups of water. Okay, one and a half cups yeah. to five cups of water. Right. Okay. Well, you want the rice uh, very mushy. Oh, okay. Like. Um, like a hot cereal, I see. oatmeal, or cream okay. of wheat. Okay. You want it that, that texture. All right. Okay. So when the rice is done, I have, I have the rice already cooked. Okay. It's Maybe here. we can get our overhead camera into yeah. the rice there. So I gotta show you. Ah. Well, just leave it there. Just, yeah. uh, just leave it on the, leave it on the burner, and then okay. the camera will. Zoom right into it. There we go. So it's it's almost yeah. like a consistency of a cream of wheat or something like that. Yeah, and that texture. Okay. The rice. But normally uh, the regular rice you use, if you use one and a half cup rice, you use one and a half cup water. Okay. Yeah. But with the sweet with, rice, yeah. you want to use more water. Right. Five okay. cups of water. Okay. Okay. And then. Then we get uh, one and a half cups of sugar. Okay, one and a half cups yeah. of sugar to the. This is um, uh, like a like a pudding, so okay. we're gonna make it sweet. All right. Yeah. 
Okay, I'm going to... And for those of you who just joined us, you're watching Agriculture 194C, Focus on Agriculture. And this evening we're featuring the Hilo Vasayan Club, and uh, now we're having Tommy Elisaga make uh, Benignit. Benignit, very good. Which is a tasty Filipino dessert. First I'm going to loosen up the rice okay. and heat it up a little bit. But this is served uh, hot. As a, as a dessert. Okay. So how long does it take to get to that consistency when you heat? The heating? rice? Yeah. Uh, I, I need time it so. Okay. <laughs> but you don't want to use too high heat to because you don't want to burn the bottom, yeah? Yeah, as long as yeah. one once it boils, turn down the heat. Okay. Yeah. Once it starts boiling, yeah. turn the heat down. And then you simmer. Okay. And with the cover on. Just like making oatmeal. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And we get one can of um, coconut milk. Okay. You can buy it at your favorite uh, supermarket. Oriental section in the, your favorite supermarket. Okay. We add this to the uh, one to the rice. One can of coconut milk. Add it to the cooked rice. Okay. Yeah. And we're gonna add the uh, one and a half cup sugar. Okay. Boy, I'm getting hungrier and hungrier as I <laughs> see this. it all. It's gonna be sweet. <laughs> okay, and nah, the sugar. Yeah. About a cup and a half, you say? Cup and a half of sugar. Okay. Uh, white sugar. Oh. And this is a popular dessert dish. Yes. This is this is Visayan version of of that uh, you know d dessert. Okay. <clears throat> Do they actually have this uh, purple sweet potato in Philippines? Philippines? Yes. Okay. We have we have purple, we have orange, we have yellow, we have just white. And you also yeah. have taro also. We have also taro, right. Okay. Yeah. Let's turn the sugar and the milk in. Okay. Okay. Sure to get the, the bottom the pot was. So you're you doing know, that under kind of low heat now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because it's already done. So, Tommy actually works at uh, as a cook. Yeah, Tommy at um, the <laughs> Kulana Prison, right? Uh, Kulani Correctional. Uh, Kulana, oh, Kulani. So he yeah. is a cook there. So do you make this for the? Uh, oh people? no! <laughs> 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 Only bread and water. Huh? No. <laughs> yeah. no, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna turn up the heat a little bit. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Get it, get it going faster. <laughs> yeah. So you don't want it to be too hot, right? Yeah. yeah. And and that's the reason why he has to cook. Particularly the uh, taro has to be cooked uh, separate because it has to be cooked very well. Otherwise, you're gonna have those itchy things in your mouth. And uh, the sweet potato cooks very very fast, so you cannot put it all together at one time. Then, so I got this cooked. I just add it. Yeah. Add the then you just add the sweet potato. Right. It's okay. about uh, one cup of um, well, diced sweet potato. Yes. Yeah, I came out with one cup. Okay. Okay. Oh, this looks like a good dish, also. Mm -hmm. Boy, it looks like we're gonna have a feast tonight. It's about one yeah. cup um, taro. Of taro. Right. Okay. Looks like more than one cup, but. <laughs> <laughs> the right. more, the better. <laughs> we, we've got a lot of students in here tonight, so. Yes, you guys can eat it. And then the thing, too, is there are so many different variations of this uh, uh, dessert. You can actually also add um, those cooking bananas. I mean, it's almost uh, ripe, but not the ripe ones. It's just oh. about to get ripe. You cut it and dice it into, uh, put it in, and jackfruit, the fresh oh, jackfruit. Yes, they yes. put it in there, the sagu. It's actually the uh, tapioca balls. This, uh, you can see it at the uh, uh, Oriental Food Store. Uh -huh. uh, it, it, is, it looks like a fish eye. A fish. <laughs> Fish eyes. <laughs> so, so this uh, dessert is kind of like a kind of mushy kind of dessert. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mushy, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. And it and it is um, it's good. And, and how we, is that about is that about done? Yeah. Yeah, yeah and it's done. I mean, okay. that's actually that's what it looks like. 
Okay, okay so right. now we, uh, it's 8.20, we have about uh, nine minutes of question yep. and answers. So that is the uh, uh, benignit, uh, the uh, pudding, <laughs> it's like a pudding, I guess. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, we've come to that portion of the class where those of you in the viewing audience, and of course those of you here yep. in the classroom can ask questions of our guests this evening. The numbers are on the screen, 961-9046 and 974-7726. So if you live on the outer islands, call us collect. And of course, those of you here on the big island, just call us direct. And so uh, while we wait for some phone calls, maybe we can get our overhead camera over the various dishes and uh, Didi can kind of explain the dishes that we uh, have on the table. Uh, do we have any phone calls at the present time? No? Okay. There, now we can zoom in on some of those dishes from uh, left to right or right to left, however you want to do it. And uh, we can have Didi kind of explain the dishes uh, that we have there. So, uh, Didi, maybe you yes. can, uh, can you uh, uh, explain the various dishes that we have on the table there? Okay. Oh, wait, we've got a caller, so we'll take the first caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? Uh, Dr. Fuji. Yeah. Oh, hi, Haruso Joe. Haruso Joe. Yes. I have a question for Ida. Okay. Ida. But I also have a very important comment to make. Okay. The question is, I want to make this uh, lumpia. Okay. I know one cup of flour, two yes. cup of water. Yes. And how much egg did you put with that? Three eggs. Uh, three eggs. Three eggs. The lumpia skin. Three eggs. Yes. Three eggs. Okay, thank you very much. And Dr. Fuji. 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 Yes. I, I like, as a cable, cable subscriber, uh -huh. portion of my, my payment goes to pay for this program here. And I like to put in an official protest that people, whoever is trying to gag you, they better take the gag off because, uh, because that's illegal. This is the only little channel that I'm speaking on. And this is, this is uh, freedom of speech without any commercial in between. Well, you and, know, uh, and that's the way Joe. I want it to be. And I don't want nobody gagging you. <laughs> well, so, some, someone had complained process. someone had complained somewhere that I'm doing too much advertising on this program so but you're not they, advertising mm -hmm. you're showing them whatever commercial people or whatever what uh, how to prepare certain foods so I, if it mm -hmm. appears like it's com uh, a commercial or whatever so be it but uh, this is supposed to be a channel that we have a freedom to well, right to Anything we want, so long as it's not obnoxious. I wish uh, all of so, you would write to the uh, cable company and, and tell them that, but uh, th this may be my last cooking class for uh, forever. Uh, because, <laughs> <laughs> not oh this session, gosh. but after this semester, because uh, it, yeah, it seemed like I, 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 Whoever comes on a program with you want to be able to speak freely, whether you're right or wrong. Well, because that's the that's the intent of the Olelo channel. You, uh, they, well, so long as you don't uh, impose uh, somebody else's freedom of speech or whatever. Yeah. Well, that's I, all I, I want to say. I wish you would. Uh, you all my much. fans would uh, write to the uh, the people there at the cable vision and uh, let them know uh, that's uh, public television. But uh, I, I just can't advertise on public television. Otherwise, I'll jeopardize all the university programs that uh, come on public television. So I, I don't want to do that. So I think this will be my last semester of cooking. <laughs> but anyway, I think we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from? And go ahead with the question, please. Do we have another caller? Do we have another caller? I Hello. Hello, I'm yes, where are you calling Wahiwa. from? Wahiwa. And what I wanted to know was the escabiche. Okay. Do you cook that with water or was it oil? Uh, you know, Ida? the ginger, the red pepper. Oh, it's sauteed. Yeah. Everything is sauteed with oil. With oil. Okay, you use oil. Yeah. 
You can use okay. olive oil. <clears throat> olive oil. Does that answer the question? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, okay thank, thank you. you for calling. And do we have another caller? I, I don't know Hello? if we have... Yes, uh, uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with your question, please. I'm calling from Kamuela. Okay, and your question? I'm, I'm interested in the dessert that that, that guy made. Benignet. I wanted okay. to know how, how, what kind of rice he used. Yeah. You use uh, sweet rice. Go ahead and explain, Tommy. Yeah. Yeah, we're using uh, sweet uh, mochi rice. You, you cannot use the um, regular rice. Also, can I delete the sugar if I don't want to use that much sugar? Yeah, yeah you may. You don't make, and make so it too when sweet. When I cook the sweet rice, it's one cup to one cup water. One and a half cups of uh, sweet rice to five cups of water. Right. Oh, one and a half cup sweet rice to five cups of water. Yes. yes. And one can of coconut milk. Yes. yes. And then the taro and, and the sweet, sweet potato. potato. The sweet potato. Yeah. Yes, pre-cooked and diced. Okay, thank you. Okay, no thank you for calling from Camuela. And I think we have another caller. Mm -hmm. uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? I am calling from Kauai. Okay, all the way from Kauai. And, and your question. And my question is, um, oh my gosh. can you use chukasoba in the ponce? What? Can you use Oh, I, I'm sorry. I, can you Wait, repeat your you? question? Okay. Can you use chuka soba in the pancit? Yeah. Chuka yes, soba. you can. Uh, mm -hmm. Any type of, uh, actually, any type of noodles you want. And uh, I have even seen people using spaghetti noodles in making pancit. It doesn't look like authentic pancit, but uh, you can actually use a any type of noodles. Okay. Does that answer the question on Kauai? Um, yes, it did. And oh. also another question was, yes. um, when is the rebroadcast on Sunday? What time is it? I really don't know. Uh, last semester they didn't do any rebroadcast, but I, apparently this, uh, this semester they're rebroadcasting the, the, the class on Sunday, I believe, but I, I really don't know when they rebroadcast uh, the class. Okay. okay. I really love your program. Thank you very much. Uh, and we'll take the last caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? I'm calling from Kauai. Okay, and your question? I'm just telling you that Sikoman is Chinese chop suey potato. Ch Chinese chop suey potato. Okay. Thank you very much. I knew I'd get a caller on that one. <laughs> okay, bye. Thank, Thank you for calling from uh, Kauai. I think we have another minute. Maybe we can take one more caller. or sh we'll, we'll, we'll take one more caller. So uh, where are you calling from, please? I'm calling from Laura Puna. Okay, and your question? Uh, my question is, uh, I know she said the Hilo Visayan Club meets every second Sunday of each month. Uh -huh. uh, what time at Hale Aloha? Okay, okay. Uh, we met at 1.30 in the afternoon. Oh, good, good, good. And um, <laughs> I really appreciate you bringing up the Visayan Club because I'm pure Visayan, and I would like to join, and I appreciate you sharing the kind of ethnic food that you have. Thank you. I'm so Americanized. I'm third generation. <laughs> I, oh. have, I do not know my culture. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, thank, thank you. you for calling. You, uh, we've completely run out of time. I'd like to thank the uh, Hilo Visayan Club, namely Margarita Hopkins, uh, uh, Ida Kogo, Tommy uh, Elisaga, and Ellen Kobele. And uh, we hope you'll join us next Thursday when we will have the Hawaii Community College Food Service Program. This is Jack Fujii saying thank you for watching and have a good evening.